Okay, how's it going everybody? So I had the pleasure to witness a world record last weekend. Mm -hmm. Now, the person who set this world record was my friend Emil Lars. He's an accomplished freediver and the world record was in blowing bubble rings underwater. So if you exhale quickly enough while you're underwater, the bubble will come out of your mouth and form a ring and move up to the surface. It looks really cool. I am a fit person and I'm an experienced scuba diver. I can probably blow five or six bubble rings at once. Now, Emil did 90. So the video you are watching right now, this was a run up where he did 73, but on, on a, a second run he did, that already was a unofficial world record. He one up himself later, he did 90 bubble rings. Now, it, it sounds like a little bit like a funny thing to do, haha, -ha, you know, pretty bubble rings, but this is actually an impressive athletic feat. It's impressive because it needs excellent lung volume, it needs excellent breath hold, it needs excellent breathing control. So again, you know, this, this I can do a small fraction of what he did. So, enjoy this footage of him blowing all these bubbles and you know appreciate that he is in a rhyme which is probably much closer to that of a dolphin or of a seal than of a regular human i'm, I'm very impressed and i'm saying this without any cynicism or you know irony here this is very cool now congrats to him emil owns and runs Dumagat Freedive, which is a free diving operation uh, in Dumaguete on Negos Island in the Philippines. I put the link down in the description. Please check it out if you want to learn how to free dive. He's the man. This gets us to a very interesting new study, which was just published a few weeks ago by um, Chris McKnight in, and colleagues in the Philosophical Transactions B of the Royal Society. And the title of this study is When the Human Brain Goes Diving Using Near Infrared Spectroscopy to Measure Cerebral and Systemic Cardiovascular Responses to Deep Breath Hold Diving in Elite Free Divers. And I think this study is very much related to what Emil did in his uh, record attempt because an elite free diver he is. So let's discuss briefly what uh, McKnight and colleagues have shown in their study. First they explain of course mm -hmm. what's going on in the human body when submerged in water for extended periods of time. So then, of course, the mammalian diving response is triggered. And they write that this diving response serves to conserve oxygen by down-regulating its rate of consumption upon submersion. Diving members respond with a significant redistribution of blood achieved through peripheral arterial constriction, prefer preferentially distributing most of the cardiac output to high-priority tissues, such as the brain, heart, adrenals, and uh, sphragnic organs, which are, you know, the uh, internal organs like the, the liver. Now, this has been known for a while. This mammalian diving response occurs both in marine mammals and it also occurs in, uh, you know, non-marine mammals like, like humans, which are, of course, you know, terrestrial primates. And they further explain that the consequence increases in peripheral resistance from this diving response uh, are compensated by a simultaneous and significant reduction in heart rate, moderately reduced stroke volume, and reduced myocardial contractility, matching left ventricular output to the restricted vascular beds and decreased venous returns. So they then went about to measure all these variables like heart rate and uh, the blood concentration in in the brains of these free divers with a method which is called near infrared spectroscopy. And in this method, 
what's happening is that there is a near infrared uh, and, it, and it's actually it's a variant of that it's called um, continuous wave near infrared spectroscopy so if I take a flashlight and hold it to my head obviously none of the light is going through why is that because you know the skin the bones will absorb this vis visible light now this is not the case if you are using this near infrared light now it's not uh, the case that you can just hold such a, like a near infrared flashlight to your uh, left side of your head and then you know light will shine through your head but there will be a certain amount of reflection this uh, reflection of this near infrared light will come from your brain tissue it will come from the brain tissue just below your skull so it's it's a great method because it allows you to measure brain activity in living in you know, intact healthy humans without having to drill holes in skulls and but at the same time you can also only measure the very superficial brain activity how does that work so this near infrared light penetrates to a small degree you know your skin and your skull then it it reflects off your blood vessels in your brain and the amount of reflection will be different depending on the amount of oxygen bound to the hemoglobin in these blood vessels so hemoglobin of course is what makes the blood red this is this pigment which binds oxygen so you know the oxygen in our blood is of course not dissolved just like in a liquid but there are these special oxygen carrier molecules with this hemoglobin pigment in our blood now as a consequence depending on the exact amount of reflection you get the you can measure how much oxygen there is in the blood of that person in addition because the parts of a person will uh, you know also cause of course changes in the you know blood flow in these reflected uh, blood vessels in your brain you can also detect the pulse now what this research group did they uh, modified such a continuous wave near infrared spectroscopy device so that it was uh, waterproof and they then fit this to a number of elite free divers so these were all men and they uh, did dives to up to 107 meters i believe in this study and so while they were underwater in the water they could uh, record you know what's the tissue satura saturation what's you know the hemoglobin loading and you know what's the pulse rate this was really quite interesting and so it's another example of how a technologically advanced will you know allow science to step forward so you know of course people were interested in these questions before but now they had a device to measure this so what did they find a number of really interesting things one was that the pulse rate of these divers and that was partially known of course uh, rapidly decreased so it decreased to up to 27 beats per minute now uh, the decrease was u-shaped that it, it relatively quickly decreased at the beginning of the dive then it stayed low and at the end of the dive uh, or, you know when, when nearing the surface again the, the pulse rate uh, you know, approached uh, the base level again very interestingly when overlaying the curves from human free divers to, with the curve uh, previously measured in another study in a juvenile gray seal the, the u-shaped decrease in pulse rate was very similar so when I was saying before that my friend Emil, who was essentially holding his breath 
and at the same time exhaling for more than two minutes when I was saying that he was more in the realm of a seal or of a dolphin than of a, of a conventional human. I, that was not hyperbole. That was actually somewhat of a conclusion of this uh, scientific study by McKnight that a elite freediver really has modified his or her body to the degree that it, it functions like a marine mammal during these deep dives. Another very interesting result in my opinion was that these dives produced very varied responses. So these were uh, different depths and these were uh, free weights, uh, these were free immersion dives, so you know where they would just pull themselves down on a rope. And th these were different individuals. And you know, they, they would be training in a different way, and you know, they were obviously born with, with different bodies. So the all of this caused a significant amount of variation. So in some of these dives, what the study authors observed that the, there was a significant drop in the oxygen tissue saturation and you know in the oxygenated hemoglobin in the brains of these free divers whereas in other dives the oxygenation barely actually went below uh, the baseline level so this this high variance between individual divers i thought that was really interesting another thing what i found interesting and, and they saw that repeatedly in a number of free divers was that this pecking I'm not even going to demonstrate that here, but, but uh, you actually you saw that in the beginning when Emil did that, where he was you know overfilling his lungs essentially with air. This pecking actually led to a decrease in oxygenated hemoglobin. So you know there this this somewhat unnatural unnatural is a weird word this unusual way of inhaling. Uh, caused a drop in oxygenation in the brains of these uh, freedivers. But as soon as they then started diving, this, this overly filled lungs gave off the oxygen into the bloodstream and th there was a rebound. So as soon as the dive started, very interestingly, after this packing, their brain oxygenation was above what it was while they were just resting on the surface. So I think these are amazing results. This device is definitely a step forward. At the same time, it does not seem to be something that's extremely complicated to operate or extremely pricey. It's, it's essentially a clever modification of a device which is, is clinically used. So. I'm looking forward to more research groups uh, using this and this will be very interesting both to research what's happening in the brains and bodies of free divers as well as what's happening in the brains and bodies of marine mammals. So that there's really an overlap here in uh, terms of research technology of course. I hope you found this little journal cap about you know, novel free diving science interesting. I hope you're impressed as impressed as I am or more with Emil's record. Again, please check him out. Please, of course, like and subscribe and share, you know, send me fan mail, leave comments, ask questions and see you next week. Mm -hmm.